Okay, welcome everybody. This is video number 43 and we're going to talk about open and closed systems. So, summary at the end that you're going to have to do. How can you prove conservation of mass? Basically, what do you need in order to do that? And I want you to compare and contrast open versus closed system and I want to make sure you have two examples of each. That definitely screams T-chart to me, so that's what I would do. All right, so quick review. Conservation of mass and matter says that it cannot be created or destroyed. It can, however, be altered and changed. Remember, there is no poofing. You can't make it disappear. Mass remains constant in that what you have on the left, the total mass, is what you're going to have on the right as well. We also said conservation of matter says whatever elements you start with, you totally can rearrange them, bust them up, change them, but you're going to end up with those same things on the right side. So chemical equations review. So just a quick vocab review for you. Remember reactants are on the left, products are on the right. We use arrow, which of course we say yields and not equals. Symbols and numbers, no words and sentences. So let's talk about a closed system. Closed system happens when all matter is contained or it's closed in or confined in some way. Meaning that, and this is a good definition for you here, matter cannot escape from or enter into. Okay, so it's kind of, it's a all together one-stop shop and closed system. This is a great example I wanted to show you here. Um, closed systems allow you to prove the conservation of mass because if nothing comes in and nothing goes out, that mass should stay the same, even if you have a chemical reaction that's happening. This is a great picture that shows you the difference between the two. So they've got a calcium chloride solution in the test tube, and then they've got a sodium, looks like sulfide, in uh, the liquid in the bottom of the Erlenmeyer flask. So when they tip it over in a closed system, notice the rubber stopper here, you can actually actually see a white precipitate of salt that actually happens. But the key here is look at those mass totals, 300.23 grams at the beginning and guess what, same thing at the end. Closed systems allow you to prove conservation of mass. So let me give you a couple examples. This is a terrarium you see here. Uh, we like to use Ziploc bags. They're cheap and easy, uh, very effective. We're going to use them in class. Domes or lid are pretty good. A confined space or some sort of container. I also like Ziploc containers. Those work really well as well. Um, an open system. So this is where matter can escape from or enter into. Um, the conservation of mass still applies here. You just can't mathematically prove it because you have no way of containing it from all the whatever maybe gas that's being given off or whatever. You can't um, contain it so you can't count it. So an example of some open system, bonfires, good way, right? You're not going to have a big dome over that to catch all the water vapor, carbon dioxide, all that stuff. A pot of boiling liquid would be another good one, right? unless you're catching all that gas that's given off, right? Uh, or a running car. So once the car's turned on and running, all that gas that's coming out of it, the exhaust, um, unless you capture that, which of course is poisonous, um, that would be an open system. The law of conservation of matter states that during a chemical reaction, the total number of atoms and total mass stays the same. So the law of conservation of matter states that the total number of atoms and the mass remains the same during any chemical reaction. So I'm going to test this by using basically some baking soda, which I put inside this tissue, and some vinegar, which I place inside this flask. So as the reaction occurs, the mass remains the same. Right now it's showing about 200 grams. So I'm going to place the baking soda in the flask. And there goes the reaction. You see some bubbling occurring here. Of course, there is a problem, though. You notice the mass is actually dropping. But when examining the reaction more closely, we saw that there was bubbling occurring. Some of the CO2 escaped. So when we actually calculated the mass, we weren't calculating the entire product. Some of it had been lost. So to test to see if the mass is conserved, I need to design a way of actually trapping all the product. That way, if any of the CO2 tries to escape, it's trapped within the balloon. That way, I can measure the entire mass being produced after this reaction, after the reaction takes place. So I'm going to take the flask here. I'm going to push in the... There we go. And it's now reacting. But notice all the product is being trapped within the balloon. So I can now measure the entire mass before and after the reaction. And if you look, you'll see that it's still holding at 200 grams.
Okay, hope you enjoyed that. So we are back again to summary time. So how can you prove conservation of mass? Remember, this definitely screams T-chart here, contrast and compare, open versus closed system. Make sure you uh, do two examples of each. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys had a great weekend, and I will see you in class.